As you may recall, considerable time has passed since President Biden brought up the possibility of appointing a special envoy for DPRK human rights. So how do you assess the latest appointment of Ambassador Julie Turner two years into his presidency? What is the significance of the North Korean human rights problem in the current administration's so-called practical and calibrated approach? Uh, the nomination of uh, Julie Turner was very welcome. Uh, it was, uh, I think, quite well received here in the United States. I hope it's been well received elsewhere. Uh, when I was the special envoy for North Korea human rights issues, uh, Julie Turner was at the Department of State uh, in the State Department's Bureau of uh, Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor. So she she brings a great deal of experience dealing with these issues within the State Department, and I think that will be very important and very helpful. Uh, uh, it's still not a complete uh, uh, process. Uh, the Senate will have to do a confirmation of her uh, based on past experience and my experience uh, several years ago. This is a, a process that will probably take another couple of months uh, before she is fully confirmed and is able to function uh, in the office. Our processes uh, require Senate confirmation. And the Senate does not move quickly. Uh, so she's not yet uh, fully active, uh, but I'm hopeful that this will be something that will happen very soon. The one thing that I think is a concern is that it took uh, President uh, Biden two years uh, to fill the position. And I think uh, among Korea watchers and particularly uh, North Korea human rights watchers, uh, this was a very long time to wait for not having a, a, the special envoy on North Korea human rights issues. It was particularly disappointing because Donald Trump refused to appoint an ambassador to that position uh, for the full four years that he was in office. Uh, the Department of State, the Secretary of State at that time, uh, was also not supportive of uh, nominating someone for the position, and nothing was done. Uh, so uh, it is a significant improvement over what has been done uh, in the previous administration, in the previous United States administration. Uh, it should have been done more quickly, but we're on the right track now. And I think that's very encouraging. Okay. Uh, we wish to know in greater depth, the role of a special envoy for human rights. You had a great experience and made a contribution to the DPRK human rights. So based on the work you have done during your term, uh, please tell us what Ambassador Julie Turner in the future will be doing going forward. And also, uh, you touched upon the human rights issue during the Trump administration, but could you briefly compare and evaluate the DPRK human rights policies under the past U.S. administrations? I'm happy to do that. Um, with regard to the... Uh, uh, responsibilities and activities of the uh, U.S. Special Envoy. There are somewhat uh, differences, uh, some differences between the uh, Ambassador for International Human Rights in South Korea and the American uh, version, which is the Special Envoy for North Korea Human Rights Issues. In South Korea, you have a Ministry of Unification, which deals with many of the issues involving North Korea that fall into the area of humanitarian and, and related uh, concerns. In the United States, uh, we don't have that uh, position. And the result is that the American uh, ambassador, human rights ambassador for North Korea, has a, a somewhat broader uh, mandate uh, to be involved in other issues. Uh, for example, uh, the South Korean position is primarily focused on the international aspects of the North Korea human rights issues. That involves working with the United Nations, with other countries through the United Nations, with other countries uh, sort of focusing on the international aspects of it. That was certainly uh, one of the most important parts of the uh, position when I was there. 
I considered it extremely important to work with the United Nations. I made it a point that every time North Korea was on the agenda at the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva, I was in Geneva for those discussions and represented the United States for those, those issues. Uh, I spent a good deal of time working with uh, various uh, UN officials who were involved on North Korea. And I think that's uh, something that the US needs. Uh, we play an important role in human rights, but when you have a special envoy whose focus is North Korea, it gives additional uh, impetus uh, to being able to to raise those issues. So the first thing that uh, I did uh, was to focus on this uh, international aspects of it. Uh, when I was uh, nominated, my nomination was uh, completed. Uh, I made my first trip to Geneva within uh, about uh, less than 10 days after I was nominated. I was in Geneva for the discussion of North Korea's human rights issues. Um, that's the first uh, area where I think uh, the uh, special envoy needs to, to focus uh, special attention. Uh, there are other things that uh, uh, are important, and that is working with other countries who have an interest in North Korea or who have an interest or focus on human rights. Uh, I felt like... Uh, my first priority was the United Nations. My second priority was working with the government of South Korea. And I spent a lot of time in Seoul. I was in Seoul even more often than I was in Geneva uh, because it was important that we understand what you were trying to do in uh, on the human rights agenda, and you would understand what we were trying to do and how we saw uh, the North Korea human rights agenda to make sure that we were on the same uh, in the same place. Uh, during most of the time that I was in that position, uh, slightly over seven years, uh, I was uh, I spent a lot of time uh, with the foreign ministry and with other North uh, with other South Korean officials. A second area of concern in terms of the international connection was Japan. The Japanese have a very strong interest in that issue. Uh, they have the abduction issue, which is an extremely important domestic political issue. But uh, Japan also has a very uh, strong interest in what's going on in North Korea. And so I spent a good deal of time working with Japanese diplomats. Uh, both uh, Japanese diplomats and uh, South Korean diplomats were important in uh, our international activities, and we worked very closely together uh, in Geneva, in New York, uh, and wherever these uh, meetings took place. Uh, in addition to those uh, three countries, the U.S., South Korea, Japan, I spent a lot of time uh, focused on other countries, particularly the European Union. Uh, the European Union has a very strong commitment to human rights. Uh, they're very active in uh, human rights issues. And I felt like it was extremely important to uh, continue working with uh, the European Union on these issues to make sure that we both saw the concerns and, and the reasons for focusing. I testified in front of the uh, Human Rights Subcommittee of the European Parliament on several occasions. I met with uh, officials in uh, Brussels on many occasions. I met with uh, European Union diplomats in uh, New York and in Geneva. And it was a very helpful and very useful uh, uh, effort to cooperate because they were committed in principle to the human rights agenda. And when we talked about South, uh, about North Korea, it was very helpful to have uh, us working together. I made a point of visiting other countries as well. I was concerned about involving Indonesia at the time that Marzuki Darosman was the special rapporteur, the former uh, uh, Indonesian uh, 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 Attorney General, uh, Minister of Justice. Uh, I made a point of visiting with the Indonesian government and raising these issues with the uh, government there to seek their support in dealing with the North Korea human rights problems. So this uh, international diplomacy and trying to, to encourage support was an extremely important part of, of what my work was there. 
a, a third element that I thought was important was raising general awareness of the problem of North Korea human rights issues. Uh, it was an important issue. It's one that people needed to understand the value of it. And I had opportunities on many occasions in many different countries to uh, meet with local news media, to meet with local foreign uh, and uh, non-foreign ministry types uh, to talk about the human rights issues. So that was, uh, I think, another part of uh, that was important uh, in terms of, <clears throat> of that issue as well. I also spent time dealing with the Chinese on the issue. They were not very happy to deal with the issue. They were polite. They met with me. We talked. They disagreed with me, and I disagreed with them. But I raised those issues with the Chinese because I felt it was important for them to understand what was important for the United States in dealing with these issues. And so I was uh, able to meet with uh, Chinese diplomats in New York, in Geneva, uh, in Washington. I met with uh, Chinese officials of the foreign ministry in uh, Beijing. Uh, I made a point of trying to go to China probably once a year to raise the issue of North Korean human rights and uh, concerns about issues related to that. In addition to that, I also visited uh, northeastern China, areas where uh, North Korean uh, individuals who were leaving North Korea went in their effort to get out. The Chinese, if they caught them, would return them. But I felt it was important for me to show interest in what was happening in northeast China uh, in dealing with these issues. I know the Chinese were following me very carefully. My colleagues and I could point out exactly who the Chinese officials were that were following us as we uh, carried out our, our meetings. But I thought it was important for the Chinese to know that this was an important issue for the United States, and it was, it was valuable to, uh, to be able to do that. Um, the US Special Envoy had uh, other kinds of responsibilities in addition to these international aspects. And uh, I uh, spent time dealing with questions of humanitarian assistance to North Korea. Uh, humanitarian assistance in the United States has to be provided under certain legal conditions, uh, has to be uh, an established need. It has to meet certain criteria for being able to monitor the distribution of the aid and so forth. Uh, there were uh, a couple of times where we were involved in some fairly, fairly serious negotiations with North Korea uh, because of uh, humanitarian concerns, uh, food problems. Uh, I was in uh, Pyongyang, uh, uh, for a round of negotiations, and then we had two or three more rounds in Beijing because it was easier for both of us to meet in Beijing than to meet in Pyongyang. And uh, we were able to have some good discussions. Unfortunately, we reached agreement on providing some humanitarian aid. This was in 2011-2012, uh, uh, but the uh, North Koreans went through a leadership change when Kim Jong-un uh, replaced his father. And that created difficulties because one of the first things he did was to announce that he was going to uh, test uh, missiles in violation of UN sanctions. Uh, I had uh, reached agreement with uh, North Korean negotiators on what we could do to meet our conditions to provide aid. Uh, but when Kim Jong-un made that announcement, it was very clear that uh, violating the uh, UN uh, sanctions and violating the UN restrictions uh, was not going to be helpful for the, it was not going to be helpful for the United States to provide food aid. And under our legislation, <laughs> there, there was no way of moving forward. So I did follow the humanitarian assistance uh, issues. There are a number of American NGOs uh, non-government organizations that play an important role in providing aid to North Korea. I worked closely with those groups. Uh, when there were things that I could do to be helpful, I was happy to be helpful for them in uh, working out the efforts they were involved in to provide aid. Uh, 
uh, it was not easy uh, for them to do that, but I tried to be helpful and, and in, encourage their efforts uh, to be able to, uh, to do that. Um, another issue of concern here in the United States has been uh, North Korean defectors. Uh, we have some uh, North Korean defectors who've come to the United States. The vast majority have gone to South Korea. Uh, there are probably more that have chosen to go to Europe than have chosen to come to the United States. Uh, but I was involved in uh, trying to be helpful in that regard uh, with working with uh, the South Korean government, which cooperated with us on those defectors who wanted to come to the United States. I was able to work with uh, people within the US government to make sure that if defectors from North Korea chose to come to the United States, we could accommodate them and work out uh, their being able to do that. So that was helpful. Um, another uh, area that I spent some time dealing with was divided families. There are many Koreans who live in the United States Many who become American citizens. Uh, there are many American K Korean Americans who have families in North Korea. And there is an interest in being able to meet with families in uh, their families in North Korea. It's the same problem that South Korea deals with. Uh, South Korea has been successful in terms of being able to set up a small number of uh, opportunities for family members to meet. Uh, we have not been successful at doing that. I was trying to do that. I tried to work with uh, uh, North Korea, North Korean government officials to see if there was a way we could do that. We were never able to make uh, any success. Uh, I also worked with the South Korean government to try to encourage uh, participation of Korean Americans in some of the exchanges with North Koreans. Uh, that did not work. Uh, it's very difficult. The numbers are smaller in the United States, uh, but the number who've been able to participate in these very limited exchanges that have taken place have been very, very small. And it's uh, we have not been uh, successful in helping Korean Americans meet with family members. Uh, but that, these were, again, some of the humanitarian kinds of issues uh, that I spent a good deal of time dealing with in addition to the international diplomacy. So it's uh, th there are a number of areas where uh, uh, we have uh, worked very closely with South Korea on all of these issues. Thank you very much. That's uh, quite a wide range of missions that you have contributed to.